Martyrs is one of those movies which absolutely isn't afraid of making you feel terrible on the inside. It's garnered quite a reputation over the years of being one of those notorious disturbing movies which absolutely doesn't hold back. It's even managed to fall into the category of being so good and unique that it ended up receiving a pointless remake. If you're squeamish, I can tell you now, this video is not going to be an easy watch. But if your morbid curiosity keeps you here, buckle up. The movie begins with a terrified, half-dressed young girl, covered in all sorts of horrible injuries, on the brink of bursting out in hysterical tears as she's trying her very best to flee from whatever it is that is behind her. It cuts to a video recording of people investigating the facility she escaped from, documenting the absolutely abhorrent conditions she was kept in and the terrible methods of torture she was subjected to. We see the young girl, called Lucy, now living in what appears to be an orphanage for young children. We can see, as well as the physical beatings she's received, she's also extremely emotionally damaged too, physically pushing people away as they try to get close to her. We see that she ends up becoming close to another young girl from the orphanage named Anna, and it cuts to a number of different shots of them doing various activities together. In this world, Anna is the only person Lucy can trust. She hasn't even been able to explain to the authorities who exactly did those things to her. But she does speak to Anna about what she endured, as I'm sure absolutely anyone would who went through whatever horrific things Lucy was subjected to. She is deeply psychologically affected by it all. Anna finds her in a bathtub with her arms covered in what appears to be self-inflicted cuts. And every night before her and Anna goes to sleep, Lucy blocks the door handle with a chair. Apart from the threat of those people coming back to get her, we also learn why Lucy does this to the door at night. We see that her trauma is manifesting itself in some rather disturbing ways. She's tormented by a zombie looking woman who is constantly trying to kill her whenever she appears. If it wasn't absolutely horrible enough what Lucy had to suffer through as a child, she's now being ruthlessly hunted and tormented by a demented looking creature which takes every opportunity to try and kill her. It skips ahead 15 years, presumably 15 years of absolute mental agony and torment for Lucy. We're introduced to a fairly normal looking family. A playful brother and sister who banter between themselves about the kind of stuff a brother and sister would. The mother attending to chores in the yard, fixing some kind of water pipe. And the father drinking his morning cup of coffee while the children eat breakfast. We spend the morning with this family while they eat breakfast together, playfully talking back and forth amongst themselves like your average family would. The doorbell rings and the father goes to answer it, then... Without warning and only a second or two of hesitation, the father is blasted by the force of a double barrel shotgun and sent flying across the hallway. The mother runs to the commotion and is instantly shot through the torso. The daughter makes a run for it, but the shooter has the son cornered. She orders him to sit down and then asks him if he knows what his parents have done. After staring back at the woman in silence with visible terror in his eyes, he is also blasted through the gut. With one person left in the house, the woman starts to hunt down the young girl, firing through the top of the bed as she's underneath. The girl takes an opportunity to run for it while the woman is reloading. You think she might be able to make it, and then is shot through the back. It cuts to the killer, now crying and screaming, covered in blood, shouting at the corpses and asking, how could you do this to me? The killer is Lucy, and the parents are the people who kept her captive as a child and tortured her 15 years ago. After 15 years of extreme mental torment and suffering, Lucy has finally been able to track down the perpetrators of the horrific crime. But instead of having them arrested, or just killing the people responsible, she murders the entire family. You gotta be sure, I guess. Lucy then rings her friend Anna and explains what she's done. Upset that Lucy did what she did when she was just meant to be surveying them, she comes anyway in order to aid Lucy with this rather gruesome situation. We see that even 15 years after what happened to Lucy, she is still being tormented by this zombie creature. She attempts to plead with it, explaining that she's killed the people and even their kids. This would suggest that perhaps this creature is just a figment of Lucy's imagination, a manifestation of all her pain and suffering forever to follow her. As she's fleeing from the creature, she collides with Anna. Anna goes into the house to examine the aftermath of Lucy's doing. Horrified and almost puking by what she discovers in the house, Anna decides to stitch Lucy's wounds up and then starts disposing of the bodies into the water pipe hole. As Anna is disposing of the bodies, she discovers that the mother is in fact still alive. Somehow. Anna decides to try and hide that fact from Lucy so there can be no more death. 
Lucy is once again attacked by the woman zombie, before managing to be saved by Anna. Lucy is convinced that this creature should stop attacking her because she's killed all the people who inflicted this pain and suffering. Throughout Lucy's time in the house, we're subjected to multiple flashbacks to her time being held as a captive. We see how she managed to escape her situation by causing one of the people holding her captive to trip over and break their ankle. As Lucy is making her escape, she comes across another woman who is also being held captive. Lucy says I'm sorry, and then makes her run for it while leaving the woman behind. That woman is the zombie lady who's been tormenting her for the past 15 years. A manifestation of Lucy's guilt for leaving her behind to be presumably murdered. Lucy believes by killing the family, they will both be freed from their torment. And with the mother still being alive, that would explain why the attacks haven't stopped yet. As Anna is attempting to get the woman out of the house, Lucy discovers she is in fact still alive, and decides to rectify that by brutally and savagely caving her skull in with a hammer. It's finally done. Lucy has successfully ended the people responsible for her and the zombie lady's pain. The zombie woman is seen calmly approaching Lucy, before then slicing both of her arms open. Now they have completed their job, they can both rest. Anna sees this from her perspective, and all that she can see is Lucy doing this to herself, confirming to the viewer that yes, the zombie was indeed just a manifestation created by Lucy. All these years of being attacked by this creature has actually just been self-inflicted pain. Lucy breaks free from the grasp of the creature, runs through a plane of glass while escaping, and then decides to end it once and for all by cutting open her neck with a shard of glass. You'd think, after all of this brutality has happened around Anna, she'd at least leave the scene of these horrific crimes. At the very least, take Lucy's corpse with her. But perhaps due to the grief or the overwhelmingness of what's transpired here, Anna decides to take Lucy back inside the house and wipe down her corpse. While staying inside the house that she should absolutely be leaving, Anna discovers a hidden entrance behind a bookcase, a secret passageway concealed in the house of known child torturers. I'm sure there's nothing but good things to come from going down there. She uncovers an underground area containing several pictures of people clearly suffering and near to death. Upon further inspection, she discovers a torture chamber. Beneath the house and inside the torture chamber, she finds a woman covered from head to toe in scars and open wounds. The woman also has a metal plate bolted into the top of her skull, covering her eyes. Once again, instead of perhaps leaving and calling for emergency services to aid this woman and uncover what this horrific family has been up to, she decides to take it upon herself to free the woman and then bathe her. As she's bathing and comforting this woman, she begins to remove the metal plate by forcefully removing the metal bolts in the top of her skull. And yeah, it truly is as bad as it sounds. Falling asleep after the tiring process of tidying up after a brutal massacre, watching your friend of 15 years die, and then finding a captive woman with her eyes bolted shut, Anna wakes up to the sounds of screams, and finds the woman attempting to saw off her own arm. The woman makes a run for it, and is instantly shot in the head. A dazed Anna sits there as a group of armed individuals enter the house and start demanding that Anna explain to them what exactly happened here. Anna is dragged to the secret basement, restrained, and then has the idea of martyrdom explained to her by an old woman. Essentially that, only through the extreme pain and torture, can certain women completely detach from reality and get a clear view of the other world the world that comes after death. A rather selfish explanation, explaining what happened to Lucy and the zombie woman as a child. They were being kept so they could be brutally and systematically tortured every day in the hopes that they would eventually become martyrs and achieve martyrdom. The old woman explains that they've tried it on all manner of people, even young children. But for whatever reason, women are the only ones capable of achieving that state. And as Anna is a woman, well, you know what's about to happen to her. We then see multiple different scenes of Anna being locked in the torture chamber, consisting of her being force-fed and harshly slapped every time she gags the food back up, and a large man that enters the chamber and ruthlessly beats her. It's implied that this torture goes on for a long amount of time, and it uses cuts to signify the passage of time. All we know as the viewer is that Anna has her hair shaved, is fed yellow slop every day, and is brutally beaten without mercy. After being subjected to these savage attacks daily, with no sign of relief or any chance of getting away, eventually Anna breaks. 
No longer is she putting up any sort of fight, or even trying to defend herself like she once did. They've broken this woman, and with no other option, she accepts her fate. That is, until one day after god knows how long of her being trapped down there and tortured. They take her into a room next to her chamber, place her in some sort of surgical apparatus, and well, they skin her alive. Like, completely skin her. Everywhere except her face. Ow. After the skinning, she is restrained to a metal bar, and finally, they believe she's reached martyrdom. She appears to have completely detached from her physical form, and is witnessing the world beyond life. It's not like it took much at all, just literal days of torment and torture. Oh yeah, and getting all of her skin surgically removed. The old woman from earlier on asks Anna to explain what exactly it is that she saw, and then Anna whispers into her ear. The people responsible for torturing all of these people to find out this information hold a meeting to be told by the old woman what waits for them in the world after the living. But before the woman tells anyone what it is that Anna disclosed to her, she locks herself in a bathroom, pulls out a gun, puts the barrel in her mouth, and then pulls the trigger. It then cuts to a skinless Anna lying in a pool of water, and then the movie ends. No conclusion for the people responsible for all of the torture. The truth died with that woman, and I can't imagine Anna exactly living for much longer. Martyrs is a terribly distressing movie. Nothing but child abuse, mental torment, physical pain and extreme suffering, and to top it all off, it ends without a satisfying conclusion. But that's a fitting end for a movie like this, if you think about it. It's a commentary on the lengths some selfish people will go to in order to get what they want, even if that involves the torture of children and skinning people alive. There's no explanation as to why the woman killed herself, but that's something which this movie achieves greatly. It makes you think about it long after the credits have rolled, and not just due to its messed up nature. Things like, are they going to try and keep Anna alive so she can tell someone else? Was there actually anything after death? Did the woman want to kill herself purely because she's selfish and didn't want anyone else knowing? Are these people going to continue abducting and systematically torturing women in order to get what they want? You'll never know, because Martyrs never tells. There isn't going to be a satisfying ending to a movie such as this. In the end, no one wins.